Tonight, Memorial Day in Israel begins where we remember those lost fighting for the nation of Israel. Today, we're honored to welcome Brigadier General Avigdol Kahalani, the legendary commander of the 77th Armored Battalion, who has also received the highest Israeli military decoration, the Medal of Valor. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. All right, so let's let's begin with um, the Yom Kippur War. Now, you fought in one of the deadliest wars uh, of this nation's history. The Israeli intelligence wasn't ready, and the IDF was ambushed in a surprising attack by several different Arab countries, both in the north and in the south. The Israeli defense system was in a complete shock. How did you deal with this threat on the spot? Uh, at that time, I was battalion commander, tank battalion commander, and uh, my mission was to block the Syrian in the Golan Heights. Uh, after 24 hours, we lost uh, more than uh, two thirds of the Golan Heights. Just a small area that I was located over there, uh, we uh, have success uh, to stop them. And they uh, fought against us for four days. The ratio between them and us was like uh, one Israeli tank against 10 uh, Syrian tanks. And their tank was uh, better tanks than ours. They uh, have a T-62. And the gun, the main gun was one one five millimeter gun. They could shoot far, four kilometer, five kilometer, and we had a gun one oh five millimeter, and we uh, that time we shot uh, like uh, two kilometer uh, far away, no more than that. It was hard. I lost uh, many of my soldiers, and we um, during the war we. Uh, we found ourselves uh, tried to stop them. They, uh, in one situation, they came 150 tank, and we have around 12 tank. And uh, we, uh, you know, in Israel, the secret weapon is the soldier. And the spirit of our soldiers, it's uh, maybe it's the best of the world. And everybody understand that one day he is holding the flag of the country, and he should protect the country. This is what we study from the kindergarten, the elementary school, and high school, and all over the way. And this is exactly, this is the weapon, not the tank, the aircraft, and the ship. The weapon is the spirit. And this is the reason that we are here, and they are not. Now, like you said, like many other Israelis, we know that you lost your loved ones during the war, but you didn't necessarily know about it until the last battle. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, I had uh, two brothers. One of them, he was in my battalion, and he supported me, and I saw him all the time uh, when we fought. And another brother is Emmanuel, that he, um, six years uh, after me, and he fought like tank commander in the, uh, Sinai. And he was killed in the night of October. Two weeks before that, he got married. He was in the middle of honeymoon. And um, when he was killed, uh, nobody told me about that. Even they told to my brother, the second brother of me, that he was in my battalion. And they told him, go home. And I didn't know I was commander with my battalion near the uh, Damascus, 35 kilometers uh, far away from Damascus. And when we finished the war after 18 days, my commander, Janos Bengal, he was the 7th Brigade commander, he called me and he said, go home. I said, what happened? He said, uh, you lost your brother. I asked, which one? And he said, Emmanuel. Many tears was in my eyes, and after that he said, and your wife, she lost her brother. What is his name? I asked, because few brothers, and he said, Ilan. He got married the year before that. For my wife, it was the second brother of her. And um, yeah, I knew after that. I was lucky because um, nobody told me before, I believe, if he, uh, yeah, told me at, at the time that he, he, he knew about that. It's, um, you know, it, it's difficult to continue to fight. And it's far away, and uh, we, uh, we took a, look, a lot of risk in, 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 in the combat. Anyway, um, this is a Memorial Day for us. And my wife, she's uh, on the way to Jerusalem to be uh, with uh, two brothers of her. And I'm going to Nestiana to be with my brother. 
Now, I want to talk a little bit more about how you plan on honoring these these family members of yours. But I, you know, it stands out to me. You lost somebody who was so close to you. Your wife lost somebody, and this is the case of many, many young people that were, you know, every people here are going into the army every day. Um, and what do you say to young people who are scared about what could happen? I can tell you that uh, in the '67 war, I was badly wounded. I was in the hospital a year. Sixty percent of my body was burned. Twelve operation. The main mission for me is to go back to the tank and to change my medical profile because they move it down and I couldn't be a commander anymore. I took the paper, I cleaned it up, and I decided to go back to the tanks. And I thought maybe I have as a, just like a post-trauma and I'm, I'm not really know what's going on with that. And Yom Kippur is, um, we almost lost the country. They came by surprise, the both side, Egypt in Syria. And two o'clock they started the war. You know, the famous picture in 67 was many, many shoes on the dune. It means they ran away from us in 67 and they took off the shoes, the boots, and they ran away. When you see this picture, you realize how it's a big success for us. But our leaders in Yom Kippur War, they remember the shoes on the dune. And they didn't start the mobilization to start to bring the, 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 the army, the reserve army. We cannot protect Israel without reserve army. And they make the decision just an hour before the war started. Even we had all the sign and we saw everything. But people think, no, we are strong enough, nobody can beat us. And we lost in this war 2,656 soldiers. And this is uh, really um, was a bad time for all of us. And I can tell you that we changed everything in our country after that. All the habits we change. Now, Memorial, you know, 60% of the population serves in, in the armed forces in some capacity. What does Memorial Day mean in Israel? And what does Memorial Day mean to you? Family that lost a child, they don't need Memorial Day. They have Memorial Day every day. When they go in the living room, they can see the picture. When they open the closet, they can see the shield. Um, we need, all the country, we need the Memorial Day to stop uh, the rotation, to stop and to salute those uh, soldiers that they, uh, they protect the country. And this is in Israel, I don't know it's uh, all over the world, but in Israel, you know, it's, it's a day with many, many songs and everybody can listen to each other. Uh, we feel united and we go to the cemetery, and we cry for our soldiers. And this is a unique day in Israel. It's a day that gives us the feeling that we still have a threat from many, many countries around us. And we use this day to teach the youth how to join the army one day and in their turn to protect, protect the army. Memorial Day is a unique day in Israel. Well, it's ultimately a show of unity. It's, it's almost like seeing an entire family come together yes. to, to grieve together, which is something yes. that, you know, having been raised um, abroad, I never saw the same thing happen when I experienced Memorial Day. So I know that tonight I'm going to be going to Kikar Rabin, one of the most central locations in Tel Aviv, to be hearing the stories of those who were lost. and to be, you know, standing in solidarity with their For families. For you, this is the first experience in your life. Yeah, this, is, this will be my second experience, but yeah. um, I'm excited to see um, how I react this time because I remember last year when it was my first experience. Wow, the tears, there's so many tears, it's just so much emotion and it makes you so proud to be part of this community and this family. Um, so we thank you for your service and uh, we will be standing in solidarity with your lost loved ones too. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, thank you very much.